In today's video, I'm going to talk about project color setup as well as project preparation for mixing purposes, which includes creating folder tracks, assigning outputs to group tracks, and various tips to help you get organized before you start working on a project. So if you're looking for this menu, it has moved. It used to be in the select color drop-down menu. There used to be options to edit colors and setting and saving presets and defaults. It has now moved to the project drop-down menu. So this is the factory default color set. There's 16 colors in total, all of which are nice bright colors with a nice shade gradient so you can tell the difference between each color. However, I've added two more colors for certain use cases and I'll show that in a minute. I've taken down the brightness and saturation and I've also named each one of the colors and that's just to ensure that I stay consistent with color sets for different instrument types, such as kick and snare drum always being red, toms being orange, etc etc and if you go into the presets tab there's also a handy feature where you can add more colors you can add tints of colors so if i click to four tints per color you could see it has different gradients there's a dark a bright uh, less saturated and closer to the whitest version of that color you also have different color tints so I'm going to keep things simple and leave it at one and I'll show you what I've done. So in the options tab, you can store a color set of your choosing and keep that as the default. And you can recall your stored color set by clicking the reset color set to default. And of course, at any time you can reset the color set to the factory settings. And as described before, I've just taken the time over the years to decide a specific color for a certain set of instruments. And by doing so, whenever I get a project from a client, I can import my color set. I can then start off by organizing groups of similar instruments, arranging those tracks into group tracks. I can group them into folder tracks. And if there's any instrument tracks that I'd like to mix individually, such as this Groove Agent drum set, I can activate more outputs on any instrument track by going into the menu and activating those outputs. And when I pull up the kit, there's all these different types of instruments. So the kick drum I'm going to be sending to output two, the snare to output three, toms to output four, overheads to output five, any symbols to output six, so that includes hi-hat and symbols, and then the room mic to output seven. And now when I click on this show hide automation, it brings down all those activated outputs. I can then name these tracks accordingly. And this last one here is the original master one, which will act as the effects that are already in the kit that will be sent th through the main. So I think that's potential reverb or whatnot that's already preset on the instrument. So at this point, I would go into my mixer tab, highlight all the drums, create a group track called drums, and I would put all of this stuff into a new folder and call this drums. The guitars, I would just rename a few things and do the same by creating a group track. Bass, because it's solo, I'm just going to leave it like that. I don't need any extra group tracks. And here, background vocals, I'm very likely to process this differently than the lead vocals. So I'm also going to create a group track for the background vocals. And once that is done, I'm going to highlight the lead vocal and the background vocal and create a group track out of that. So now that everything is routed correctly, 
and sorted and named, I now want to color everything so that every time I look at all of these tracks, I just need to see the color and I would know exactly what I'm dealing with. And that's why I keep a stored color set like this. I now have access to all the colors that I've stored and each one of them are named in case I forget. So again, the main drum color is red for me. That includes kick and snare. Those are the most fundamental pieces. Then I group things close to the red color. So toms, orange, overheads and cymbal, this sort of yellowish orange. Any folder track in my project gets colored this extra color here, which is basically brownish, non-colored gray. <laughs> I also color all of my group tracks that standard color so that when I'm in my mixer window, I see all of my instruments and then I can quickly identify which one is the group track. I also capitalize all of the letters so that when I look at the, the letters themselves, I know what is a group track. Bass is always green. My main guitars are always this uh, nice deep blue. And vocals tend to be from this bright pink to this other purplish pink color. I also colorize my main stereo output as red. I also colorize my marker track this color and my ruler track this sort of color here. If I had acoustic guitars, they'd be close to that bluish color, but not quite. So given what I've shown, there's many different in-between colors that I'm not using in this project but they would be used for other things like piano. If I wanted to differentiate between three guitars, I could do guitar rhythm, lead, and guitar solo. And these are all blue, but they're different enough that I can see and recognize the difference. Likewise, if I had some percussion, I would have it in between bass and drums. In order to change the name of the color set, you just double click in this name area, rename it. You can also click on the little settings button, insert a color, duplicate color, remove color, or reset the color here. And once you're done making all your changes, you would want to store that color set as default. So it takes what you've made as far as changes, stores it as the global default, and you can recall that default by clicking reset color set to default. And if you ever want to start from scratch from the factory settings, you click reset color set and you're back to square one. So just as a general overview, now when I look at this, I look at the different colors and I instantly know what it, what it is that I'm mixing. I know exactly where my group tracks are. And I've taken a client's project which they have a much different way of colorizing tracks, a uh, different way of organizing tracks, different way of routing tracks. I've taken all of that stuff, distilled it down into exactly the way that I like to work, where I can instantly identify group tracks, uh, tracks of a specific type like drums, bass, guitar, vocals, and all of this preparation before doing any mixing, probably only taking me less than 10 minutes, but it ends up helping me all along the mix process. Everything is organized. It makes the mixing process um, a little bit more streamlined. So that is it for today's video. Thanks for watching. Take care and bye-bye.